Hi, I'm Charles again, and today I've got an old Crossman 761 XL multi pump BB pellet gun. And um, since it is old and I got a second hand, it's not quite, you can sort of hear it's hissing out of air, so it's not, not holding air like it should be, I'm not shooting strong. So, I found a kit online. There you go. A kit from youfixitkits.com. Didn't cost too much. Came with a few O-rings and a new pump assembly. And came with instructions for on their website. So that um, you can disassemble your pellet gun and get it going good as new again. Shorter screen. And that screw, which I believe is exactly the same as the other. But there's also a screw up in here, which you have to remove. It just stays with the stock. Set that aside. I'm going to grab this with a pair of pliers but to keep it from messing it up. I'm going to wrap it in some electrical tape. I'll do the trick. And we're going to gently Yep, I did it. Got it started. I just came right off of there. And we should be able to Oh, oh on this side. Screw there, another short one. Let's screw there, another short one. That side looks like it's kind of grungy. We'll use this opportunity to clean all this up. Now this would have been sitting down in there. That's what keeps the BBs from going from this reservoir up into here. There we've got. What is that? That's a little detent of some sort there. And on the corresponding side, that would be hitting right there, whatever that is. And on this side, It's sitting right on that spring. You got that. I 
Uh, something to do with the bolt going forward and back and keeping it in place. And there's the simple trigger. And the safety. Simple enough. That I'm not sure where it came out of. I'm assuming one of the screws. That screw right there, I'm guessing. Okay, I was wrong about that little pin. That pin actually goes in there. That stops the BBs until you pull the bolt back. So I gotta make sure that goes back in there. It's a 564 Allen key. I think we're going to take that all. Well, maybe we do take that all the way out. We might not have to, but we're going to go ahead and do that. Now down in there is a tiny little screw. Am I still recording? Yes. So, <clears throat> see a tiny screwdriver. There's a tiny little screw. Alright, here's what we've got so far. There's going to be this little seal here we're replacing. That came in the kit. But then I want to look at the side here. That's where this one valve moves back and forth. We have to make sure that lines up later. And I haven't taken this off yet. I'm going to have to get me some drift pins. We'll be replacing that as well too. So we'll see if we can't get that pin out and get to it. Okay, I didn't have a drift punch, but I found one of my mini screwdrivers would fit perfectly. So that's what I used to push that out. I could probably use it to push it back in as well. This will come out rather messy. And then this should slide on out. And there's part of the problem. You got that cup there that just cracked off. But this whole assembly is going to be replaced. So we'll keep on going. Right, to replace this, we're going to push out that pin right there. And that takes that whole thing apart. And we'll set that off to the side because I don't think we'll be reusing that anymore. Right, back here is the hammer assembly. And I think. Yep, you can just push that pin out. I don't know if it goes out one side or the other, but it seems to be coming out on that side easier. So we'll push that out. And that does have like a little flat on that side and not on the other. I'm assuming it only goes in the one way.
one piece. Slides out there, but there is more up in here. All right, here we've got the, I guess, cylinder, whatever. There's this little detent right here. I'm going to use a wood, valve, wood dowel to push this out. This is the valve assembly. And as you can see, it's got that one little hole thing on it. So when we go to push it back in here, we have to make sure that lines up there. Right, the same thing we did with the where did it go? The little bolt handle to keep it from getting damaged. We're going to wrap this valve assembly that half and that half with electrical tape, and then use two pliers to pull it apart. So we'll wrap that. Come here. And this one around this half. And then hold that half carefully. And this half. Spring. I have to push something in that tiny little hole there to get this part out. But yeah, it's all gunked up. And with this, just that little hole there, get me a paper clip and you can push that out. Yeah, I'm taking some Q-tips to clean up these gunky insides. Might give me some alcohol too and clean that out a bit before I reassemble it. I want to remove this old O-ring. And clean this up a little bit better. I'll put this new O ring on. And on this end, we're going to put this back in. And this piece. On this side, we put our spring in there. We've been using our pellet gun oil. We're going to put just a little bit of oil around that O ring. 
Before we screw it all back together. These are pliers again. I'm not going nuts, just get it firm. That should be good. And we'll take this tape off and remove that O-ring and put a new one of those on there. You can see here, the tape took the brunt of the damage from the pliers, so it didn't damage the soft brass body. Like I said, there's our old O-ring. We'll take that off, clean this up a little bit, put on the new O-ring. Okay, we've gotten our brass piece cleaned up. Put on this new o-ring there. And of course put a little bit of oil on there. We might put a little bit more before we go to completely reassemble everything. That's looking nice there. And now we're moving on to this valve. This interior part here's got an O-ring inside there and an O-ring right there. We gotta clean this all up and replace those O-rings. It's hard to see in there, but there is a little tiny ring in there that you got to get out. And then once you get it out, you got to clean up in that groove good to make way for the new one. Right, this one you're supposed to pinch and shove it up in there. And then use a wooden object. This instance, I'm going to use a Q tip handle to get it in there once it's all the way in. And I've also <coughs> stuffed a rag in here to push through to clean out all the gunk inside the tube. a few more times get it nice and clean down in there all right we're going to put a little bit of oil inside the pump tube And that hole is going to have to line up there. That hole is going to have to line up there, and that hole is going to have to line up there. So we'll slide this in here. Make sure this is lubed well. Oh. 
push that in using our wooden now. And there, that's close. We'll use our Q-tip to get that lined up and we'll check the alignment of that hole and that worked out nice as well. So that's ready to go. And then we reinstall the hammer assembly. Well, we had taken off the old pump assembly, which had that cracked ring right there. And we've got this new pump assembly that we'll be putting back in. So I have this little pin here. And that's going to be held in the tube, so we'll put a bunch of, or a thin amount of all the instructions say, on this cup. And we'll install it in here. That's already feeling better. What we'll be doing here is putting that back there. Put that in between it and installing this pin back in place. Okay, we've got the pin back in and I've pumped it the one time. My hole is still somewhat lined up there. And my hole at the top, I need to move that just a little bit to get the line up a bit better. Okay, something I didn't notice before is this port gasket has got a little metal piece inside of it. So, when you install the new one, that goes on there. And then the metal part down in that hole. And that lines up with the bottom of the hole in the barrel. And then you should be able to install the screw into the barrel. T tiny one we took out earlier.
else we need to reinstall this. CNC barrel clamp screw. And that's all of our cups and seals and pumps and everything. So now all you gotta do is reassemble this back to the receiver parts. All right, when you're putting the receiver back together, one of the things you need to make sure is that the trigger sear goes up in there. And looking on this side, that hole has to line up with your with your pump on this side. You can see that there. So that has to line up there. Trigger has to be inside there. And put the screws back in. Oh, and before I forget, on this side we have to have that little BB detent thing that has to line up with that hole right there. So the lots have to line up as you're putting it all back together. You need about 10 hands. But a few things not to forget, don't Forget the stock holding nut there, it'll have a tendency to fall out. And then your bolt, you have to slide that back in place before you put this half back on because that has to go through there. It's a matter of installing all the correct screws in the correct spots. Oh, and other little things that happen to fall out. This little BB selector screw thing where you can get BBs from the magazine into the the Q, I guess you'd call it.
and that, once we take the tape off, should be everything. Actually sounds better, we'll see how it shoots. <clears throat> Alright, here's all the tools I use. The kit, of course, from youfixitkit.com. Flat screwdriver. I uh, have one of these screwdrivers. Use these too, just to flat in. A couple of these vice grips. A saw face hammer as well. Some Q-tips, a towel rod, a, I believe, 564th Allen key, plug gun oil, paper clip to push some stuff apart. Could have used some O-ring picks and maybe a drift pin, but I made what I had work. And the um, mini screwdrivers as well. And that's it. Now, I've got it all done. Got the seals replaced, everything cleaned up. Got it looking new, got it sounding good. It's actually pumping up. Holding air like it should. Pretty consistent there. If you can see it, 577. So, as I say, it didn't cost much. It took a little bit of time as far as taking it apart and everything. Hopefully, my video will help you if you want to do this yourself. And if you would, please like and subscribe. And good luck with your project. See you next time.